All right, so once again, we are back at the computer, and today we are going to be looking at three different scenes from uh, movies and kind of analyzing how drums are depicted in films. Uh, I got this idea after watching the GQ video of Tony Hawk uh, analyzing skateboarding scenes in movies, and I just thought that was so cool, and uh, that it would be cool to translate that to drums. And although I am, of course, not the Tony Hawk of drums, I can barely... Uh, spin a stick and a 900. I still thought it'd be cool to take you along for the ride. And um, for drummers out there, I want to know what your opinions are. And for the non-drummers, I'll just kind of give you a window into uh, a drummer's perspective on how drums are portrayed in film. So in any case, let's get things started here. The first scene, as you can see, uh, we are in Wayne's World. This is Garth. Uh, this is his in my mind, famous uh, drum solo in the music shop. So let's check this out for a second. <clears throat> and we're gonna be kind of scrubbing through and, and bouncing around. So if you wanna watch these clips in full, you should do that separately. Uh, otherwise you're gonna get annoyed. So we've got Garth here. Let's see what we got. So big rock, Yamaha kit. Big toms. So you know, rock and roll. Let's give the kit for a second, then I want to talk about that transition. So, uh, the of course, big rack system, double double bass, very legit for a uh, sort of classic rock style drum solo. Um, and then the rack system. This is kind of a crazy looking rack system, um, but with the uh, the two symbols mounted up top. I like how excessive that is. How there's this giant overhead rack system for the sole purpose of mounting two crashes. Um, yeah. Anyways, a uh, couple things here. First of all, this transition I love because not only does it transition visually from him being in the music shop to to being on stage in his own mind or whatever. Uh, but the audio also transitions from being, I think, just one mic, you know, whatever they were actually filming with, to probably the 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 sound from these microphones that you can see here on the drums uh, goes to like just a, a big like dense rock mix kind of thing. So here, check this out. Okay, one mic. There, transitions into the studio sound. Now the solo itself, well, obviously that's so cool. Dana Carvey plays this solo. This uh, Dana Carvey is a drummer, and um, he is actually playing this solo. And he's sort of obscured by the drums, so he could very easily have been um, faking it or miming it. But um, as far as I know, as far as I've been, this is him playing this solo, and and it looks like it's made for me to believe otherwise. It looks just like he's playing that solo. I'll, I'll let him get the line in. Wow. You're amazing, dude. Of course. Thanks. I like to play. Yeah. So, um, as far as the solo itself, this is one that when I was a, when I was a younger drummer, this solo, for whatever reason, just captivated me. I was so into, like, this just seemed like the coolest solo to me. And it's still fun for me to listen to now, but looking back, I mean, it, it, there's nothing too crazy going on here. We've got some moderately fast single strokes, just kind of accents on, on toms, breaks and pit crashes, around the toms, kind of all single strokes, sort of, you know, classic rock drum solo. But it's just fun, you know, I, it, it doesn't need to be anything more than it is, and, and especially for you know, one of the lead actors, like, that's, that's an amazing drum solo, so props to Dana Carvey for actually playing the solo, um, and yeah, this is a very legit scene in, uh, in my mind, so, okay, let's flip it over to, uh, this is, uh, I think the, I think the film is called Shootings in Zachariah, or maybe the film is just called Zachariah, I actually haven't seen this movie, but I've seen this clip many times of Elvin Jones, jazz legend, Elvin Jones, uh, with a an acting and speaking part in this film, and then, well, I'll just show you here. So first of all, here's Elvin. Just swag up to 11 with, I'm, I'm pointing at the screen, I realize you can't see that, I'll use the mouse here. 
Like, what, are you what doing is he wearing up here? here? Anyway, you should be home with your mother on the farm, <laughs> taking care of the pigs and cows. Enough talking, boy. Draw. <laughs> Elvin, and you know, one of the greatest jazz players of all time, shoots a guy twice. Okay, and then here's here's what's cold as ice. Here's what's crazy. Skip past all of this. Band starts playing. Again, I don't really know the context. I haven't seen this movie. Band starts playing. You can tell this guy's not. You, you can already tell. I mean, for the drummers out there, you guys know immediately. If any non-drummers are watching this, you can tell immediately that um, what he's playing does not match the audio. And in my mind, this is somewhat for, forgivable because there's there are so many distinct points of impact and so many um, disparate motions when you're playing drums that it's just so hard to mime it and really get it to look correct. I think other instruments like like piano, you can sort of obscure the person's hands and they can just kind of do this and it'll look okay. But drums is really, really hard to get to look right. So you can see, Yeah, it, 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 you know, when he's hitting the snare, does not match up with This is, this is the coldest, this is the coldest-ish I've ever seen from a drum. Just, just stepping up on him. Starts hitting his cymbals. Just pushes the thumb off the kit. Now here's a problem. First of all, I just absolutely adore the fact that Elvin Jones is ripping this drum solo in in this this film. But the problem is that he 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 definitely played a solo, but I think he played two solos. I think the deal is that he probably played one solo in the studio as an overdub and then he did one solo actually here on camera. And what's crazy is instead of picking one or the other for the audio, they sort of like mix and match both of them. This is what I'm this is what I'm guessing because you hear way more going on on the snare here. Like he's already started a solo, and and none of that is happening. So you can already hear like the studio version of Elton Ripley. Okay, but you you can definitely hear like those crashes. Those are definitely authentic. That's legit. It's all I'm fine. But like that, like that snare roll there. Way louder than everything else. Like it's, it's they've obviously combined the the two versions of the solo or whatever. Bizarre, I mean, I, they could easily just left this solo as it was. So that's kind of my problem with that. Um, I actually am not, I, I'm guessing these are probably Elvin's actual symbols. I don't know if this is a kit of Elvin. I haven't really looked closely at that. Um, I was going to say, I don't know whether it's period correct, but I don't really know what the time period the movie's supposed to take place in, so I'm not going to comment on that. So, yeah, I mean, this solo, as far as a movie depiction of drumming, is about as legit as it can get, other than having two versions of, of the audio going on. But, you know what? Actually, let's check out this overhead. It's Elvin, so, you know, I'm not complaining. Uh, I don't see why this wouldn't have been one of his actual sets. Those look like probably his symbols. Those look like period correct um, Zildjian's uh, to what he would have playing at the time, I guess. The fact that it's riveted, that the, the right that's riveted in it, like it was probably one of his, that doesn't seem like something that a studio would have picked up. But anyway, rip the solo these triplets that everyone attributes to John Bonham. There we go. We got Elvin playing them for everyone. Like right here. Like none of this is matching up. But like some of the crashes match up. So anyways, that's what's weird. Um, yeah, so... You know, legit, other than the, the two tracks of audio. Okay, so uh, our third and final scene we're going to take a look at is uh, from Whiplash. And Whiplash, man, 
yeah, Miles, Miles Teller, I believe is his name. I thought he did a, a great job. Um, him and uh, the, the bald guy. I can't believe I can't remember his name. Both did great jobs um, acting in this. And I believe Miles took, you know, a few months. I, I heard he took a few months of drum lessons to make sure he looked right for the part, which is hopefully kind of the bare minimum you would do if you're going to be a jazz drummer in a feature film about jazz. Um, this movie got awards as far as I know, and uh, a lot of people really, really loved it, and I've definitely been asked my opinion on it, and I don't I don't really know how to sort out my opinion, so I'd love to hear what you think if there are other drummers that have watched this. It seems like a very love it or hate it thing. People either absolutely hated it or, or absolutely loved it. Um, I, I'm definitely a fan of anything that brings music, and in particular music education, into... Um, the limelight, which this definitely does, and it kind of shines a light on on drums in particular, and you know a feature fil- film about a drummer. Like I'm, I'm completely in support of that. Um, but just the way they depict um, jazz education, I think, is uh, a bit dramatic. Which obviously it's a feature film, so you know I, I give them a pass on that. But um, I don't know. It seems like maybe the message they send in this movie isn't uh, maybe isn't isn't healthy, but um, I'm not sure. In any case, this is just one scene. There's a lot of scenes we could an- analyze as far as like how legit is this drumming wise, uh, but that's that's kind of what we're gonna focus on here. Uh, harsh language in this scene, I think, if I remember correctly. So there's your warning. What's his name? God, I can't believe I can't remember. I, I thought he was he he was fantastic, and I'm pretty sure he's he won whatever award you get for being a good actor. In this one. Uh, now we're gonna slow it down a little bit. Um. Yeah. So just start the plan. Okay. Uh, a couple things here. Let's let's analyze the kit. Um, uh, it looks like he's playing. Ooh. Is that a is that a Mapex kit? Okay, that looks to to me to be a Mapex kit with stock bottom heads. Not legit. Um, we've got DW hardware. Uh, Istanbul Agop Symbols, that looks like a Signature Series um, ride, and this is another Signature Series ride over here, it looks like. I'm not sure what he's playing for hats. Those are very legit. And here's a small detail. This this hi-hat clutch, that looks like that looks like either a Yamaha clutch or maybe the, the Remo clutch. Also very legit. Okay. So here's what's tough, is that they really have to show him playing a, a drum solo and playing this song, and it has to look more or less correct. So uh, already, drummers can tell that this does not match up, which I'll just say first and foremost, like I don't expect him to learn how to play these pieces perfectly before being able to act them. I just need them to be close enough that I can suspend my disbelief, which is a little bit tough in some moments of this film, but I'm sure for most people watching it, most non-drummers, it's totally fine. But you can see, like, yeah, like, like he, he did a little fill there, which was late. You know, the audio did not match up. Also, I'm not really sure how easy it would be for him to call out to the bass player. Not sure how loud it would be. The big thing is that he's 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 accenting quarters on the ride, which does look looks he looks good, very legit. Accent quarters, ding, 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 ding. ding. Okay. Carefully crafted shots so that we don't actually have to see what his hands are doing. I don't know who actually played drums. Okay, some gear shots here. This is what we need. Saw Evan's heads. Legit? Not legit? You tell me. I'm not gonna say anything. I don't know if that I don't know if that page is supposed to look difficult or not. I don't wanna I don't wanna sound super pretentious. I mean I'm I'm certainly no great jazz player, but I mean that's probably the actual sheet music, so I guess I can't understand. Camera moves. Again, 
man. Mapex set. I don't know. Not legit. Not for a not for a high level jazz band. Okay, that that almost looked correct. Now there's all okay. We just had several hits, several figures that he's supposedly crashing, but again, he's just doing his quarter note thing. None of those crashes. I feel like the way he's moving and you know, what you can tell he can do and what he can play, I feel like if there had been a drummer in the editing room, they would have been able to cut it together so that even drummers would, would be able to suspend the music. But... that you can see it's panning past him it's supposed to go rah, dun, 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 dun. snare crash 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 there's none of that Look at that. Mel oh, okay. This was not a 30th anniversary. This is a uh, special edition jazz ride. Very legit. Uh, interesting. The stock Mapex top head and an Evans on the floor tom and the snare drum. Now that is very legit in the sense that uh, they, and, and they're marked up too. And the fact that it's mismatched. I don't know if that was intentional or not, but that's certainly something that would actually occur. Here's a signature series ride. Very legit, and the Mel Lewis hi hats. Those are all. Those all would be symbols that would be used at a high end jazz program. So, that. Um, that was pretty good. I don't know. I don't know if there was a stand in drum. I'm wondering if there was another drum for this at his face. And that is how. Yeah. If they didn't, that's how they should have. Man, I just like the cinematography here. Like, whew, the symbol that looked beautiful. Okay, here's the other thing. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna be merciless here, but the right hand drummer. I, I'm just telling you what what drummers would see. The drummers can see the, that right hand technique right here. I would. You would never see that in, from a high level jazz player. I'm not saying that's me. I'm just saying. Okay, give ahead a little bit. I think we kind of expanded the game on this one. Let's play. Yeah. Solo. And then he's and then come around the band or whatever. Play so well, it's happening. It's been a while since I've been I guess that's it. That almost looks okay. Almost. Whoa. What was that? I, I don't remember that. Is that supposed to be floor tom or kick? Is that double bass? Where is this next one? That's kind of a weird edit. That's a weird cut. Not legit. Again, he's just... Look, you can see he's, uh... He's just on the right here. So, pretty much at the end there. Uh, again, I, I don't want to make it sound like I'm I'm trash on it, but definitely some things in that movie that that a drummer, you know, some some things that they definitely paid attention to that I, I really give them credit for, and then some things where you know it's just impossible to to play it exactly right to where every single hit lines up. Um, but yeah, there's a, a brief window into how drums are depicted in film, and my take on it at least. So if you enjoyed it, uh, you can give thumbs up. You can like the video or you can subscribe to this channel. Let me know if you like it. Let me know what you think about these movies, and I will see you in the next one.